Burgers are elite, but in the US, a burger must be beef. But here in Australia, anything in this is considered a burger. But is that correct? Well, today, not only are we gonna make three different burgers, sandwiches, whatever you wanna call them, but we're also gonna to talk to the burger scholar himself, George Motts. If you don't know him for his burgers, you might know him for his amazing sideburns, and we'll see what he has to say on the subject. Anyway, first up, we're gonna make a chicken one. Let's get stuck in. So we're gonna do a grilled chicken burger, well, sandwich today, because I love a fried chicken burger, but sometimes you can't be bothered to deal with all the oil. So I got some chicken thighs here, just gonna take off any of that excess chicken fat. Keep that stuff, it's delicious. Trim it up so you don't have any scraggly bits. And then if you've got any really thick bits, you can kind of butterfly it out a little bit. When you say butterfly, it means you're gonna cut it in between, but you still keep a piece on so it stays as like one piece. Just like that. Cool. Okay, for the marinade, gonna use some salt, a little bit of oil, just for a binder. Magi seasoning, which is basically liquid MSG. It's good stuff. I think it's used a lot in like Indonesia, but I think it actually comes from Europe somewhere. Could be wrong. I'm wrong often. Worcestershire sauce. Is it Worcestershire or Worcestershire? Worcestershire sauce. I don't know why everyone struggles to say that word. And garlic powder. Seems kind of random, but we're gonna go with, I guess, almost like an Asian-y flavor profile here. Not really, but kind of. Give that a little mix. Get all our chicken back in there. Make sure it's completely covered. And we're gonna chuck that in the fridge for about an hour, just to kind of get those flavors to marry together. Make a big mess. So the chili crisp mayo is pretty simple, and as it sounds, as it sounds, as it sounds like mayonnaise, chili crisp. Make sure you get lots of the chunky bits in there. As much or as little as you like. This stuff's not super spicy, so don't be too scared of it. Give it a mix. Good color. Done. All right, let's get everything together before we head out to our grill. We've got our mayo, pickled red onions. If you need a recipe for this, there's one on my website. There's pickled red onion recipes everywhere. Avocado, we'll cut that fresh to order. Got some streaky bacon that we will cook on the grill as well. Obviously our bun, oak leaf lettuce, and of course our chicken that's marinating to the grill. All right, nice hot grill. While that's cooking, we get our bacon on. Now it's not gonna be crispy bacon because it's almost impossible to make crispy bacon on an open charcoal grill. All right, now our bacon's pretty much ready. Oh, it is ready. We'll pull that off. Chicken's got a little bit left to go, but in the meantime, we can toast our buns. We've buttered the bun. Always butter your buns. Give it a nice light toast. You want some good color on your chicken, you know, a bit of char on there's always welcome. Once your chicken's fully cooked through, we'll pull it off. Time to assemble this delicious smelling burger. I tell you what, that chicken smells pretty good. So bun, chili crisp mayo, both sides. No one likes a dry burger. Lettuce next. Chicken. Bacon. Avocado. Oh, stunner. And last, but definitely not least, ugh, some acid. Coming in the way of some pickled onions. On she goes. Now that is a grilled chicken burger. Stunning. We're gonna do the sacrilege thing and cut this thing in half, get a little cross section. Looks pretty good. Let's have a taste. Mmm. That lovely grilled chicken, smoky bacon, a little bit of spice from that chili crunch mayo. What was not to like about that? We're gonna do the fish burger next, but before we do that, let's have a little conversation with my mate George Motts and see what he has to say about the subject. Hey mate, how you doing? Good to meet you. It's really great to meet you. Thank you, George. I've been uh, I've been watching you and following you for years. So oh, thank you. Here in Australia, you know, we have this tendency of calling anything in a burger bun a burger. I was actually talking to Alvin, and he said, "Well, you've got to talk to George because he has a very strong opinion on this." So, what's your opinion on the fact that we call everything a, on a bun a burger? First of all, it's completely misguided. That's the <laughs> that's the real answer. That if it's on bread, it's a sandwich. By the way, even a hamburger is a sandwich technically, yep. but it's called a hamburger because it came from ham. Germany. When it came from Hamburg, Germany, it originally came as only as beef. In fact, actually, the first hamburgers were not served on a bun. The first yeah. hamburgers were actually served on toast, whatever they had around. And the whole idea of the standardized bun only happened much later at a place called White Castle. Originally, when it came from, from Germany, it came as ethnic food through the port of New York. There were no restaurants really back then that served ethnic food. You had to go to someone's house to get ethnic food or go to a street cart that was selling to uh, like-minded Germans. Yeah. And they were looking for a steak in the style of Hamburg, yeah. which would have been something called frikadellen. Frikadellen is uh, this minced beef that has other spices put in there and sometimes onion inside as well. From the street carts, as it was called, you know, steak in the style of Hamburg, yeah. that was shortened or flipped to Hamburg steak. Right. And eventually it moved toward hamburger, which by the way is what, if you're from Hamburg, you are a hamburger. <laughs> 
Okay. Roughly, when did it come to the States? Well, roughly uh, sometime in the 1870s or 1880s. We're not totally right. sure. Yeah. Uh, we do we do have some of the earliest mentions of the hamburger in print going all the way back to 1892 or 1893. Yeah. But we do know that it must have happened earlier than that, probably in the 1880s is my guess. There's some mention that there was on a menu at Delmonico's in New York in the 1830s, and it's completely false. That was a, a, a lie, yeah. <laughs> fabrication. <laughs> Categorically, uh, from the, the burger scholar himself, uh, if it has chicken in it or fish in it or anything else in beef, it's a sandwich. It's a sandwich or it's a cake. You know, it's a crab cake. It's a chicken sandwich. I mean, it's just, it can't be called a burger. I'm sorry. Well, thanks very much for your opinion on that, George. You're in the in New York City, then definitely get down to Hamburger America and sit on the counter and get an Oklahoma smash, what you're famous for now. Yeah, we have two burgers in the menu, plus the rotating special. We have the Oklahoma fried onion burger. We have a classic smash burger with, it's served with mustard pickle onion, which is the classic Midwestern trend. Trilogy. Yep. And there's also the burger of the month. And it's always one of my hamburger heroes that we bring in from somewhere else and we keep that burger on the menu for the month. We're open seven days a week, 12 hours a day. So come on in. And one final question, mate. Where's the best burger you've ever had outside of America? I can't tell you that. It's a secret. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. I'll, I'll accept I know too much. I'll... Sorry. Oh, you're a legend, George. Thanks. Thanks for your time today, mate. All right. The grilled fish sandwich. Thank you, George. Take your fish. This is Snapper. All right. This is local to where we're from. Uh, it's called Tropical Snapper, which I actually don't know what that means. It feels like a nothing kind of name. But what I'm trying to get at is encourage you to use fish that's local to your area. You don't need to buy a particular fish for this. I like a, a white flesh fish for a grilled fish burger. Something with, you know, that's kind of relatively firm. Otherwise, when you grill it, it's hard to grill. Go to your fishmonger, see what's fresh, see what's good. We're not going to do much to this. So I'm just going to trim it up a little bit. With these pieces here that are like still whole fillets, I'm going to take it down the center and we'll use a couple of these portions per burger. I'll save the scraps for duck food. Back on the tray, olive oil and tahine. Tahine is a Mexican spice blend. It's really citrusy, which is why I really like it with these fish burgers. A little bit of spice, but nothing crazy. They use it a lot on cocktails in the States. Flip that flush over, flip that flush. <laughs> Sound like such a kiwi. There you go, I'm just gonna leave that in the fridge until we're ready to grill. So we're gonna do a little red cabbage and carrot coleslaw, and we're just gonna do it vinegar based. We're just gonna dress it with vinegar. Why? Because we're gonna do tartar sauce with this fish burger. So we don't want mayonnaise, mayonnaise. Super simple. Red cabbage, mandolin, use the guard, unlike me. Nice and fine. Into the bowl. Carrot, peel. Now, if you don't wanna use a mandolin for the carrot, you can just grate it. Slice into nice thin strips, and then use your knife to make nice small little battens. Season with salt, and dress with a little bit of apple cider vinegar. Mix it well, it's all nice and even. That's the little cabbage coleslaw done. We're gonna treat the cucumbers very similar. Top and tail off. What I want with these cucumbers is like long ribbons. So mandolin ideally, you can actually use a peeler as well. Nice long thin ribbons, straight into a bowl. Why we do it like this? It gives us something to build up in the burger. Salt. Apple cider vinegar. If you don't want to use apple cider vinegar, just plain white vinegar will work. And lightly toss them. Make sure it's nice and evenly dressed. Okay, to make the tartar sauce, or tartare sauce. And that reminds me, let me know in the comments below, is this fish thing that I'm making a fish burger or a fish sandwich? I want to hear what you say. And subscribe if you're not, because heaps of you aren't. Just subscribe, please. It helps me out a lot. I sounded very desperate, but anyway. Mayonnaise. Shallot. If you can't find a shallot, you can use a red onion. Peeled. And I like my tartar sauce chunky. Finely diced. In that goes the mayonnaise. What came first? Beef, tartare, or tartare sauce? Leave me down in the comments if you know the answer to that one. Some fresh dill. In that goes. Capers. Just run your knife through them. And last but definitely not least, some diced cornichons. Don't put your fingers in the pickles. They won't last as long. Give it a mix. That's it, we got our fresh, red, fresh fish ready. We got our bun ready. Now the bun, I've chosen to use a potato bun because I want something nice and soft. We've got our little carrot and red cabbage slaw and our cucumbers, tartar sauce, and we're good to go to the grill. Now the trick with grilling fish is try not to move it too much. You need to make sure it's really nicely sealed before you try and flip it. While that's cooking, we're gonna toast our buttered buns. When you're flipping fish on a grill, just wiggle your little fish pellet in there and lift it up and that way you should avoid sticking and if it doesn't come up 
Just leave it kind of chill and get a little good sear on there. That's almost finished cooking. Let's get assembling. So we've got a toasted bun, tartar sauce on the bottom. I don't think we need to double dip this one. Then we're gonna go a carrot and red cabbage on the bottom. Time for our fish and our really lightly pickled cucumber on the top. Here we go. Grilled fish burger. All right, let's get a little cross section of this. Oh, look at that. Stunning. Let's have a taste. Mm, it's great. The soft bun eats really well. It does make it tricky to eat because it does tend to fall apart a bit, but flavors is delicious. That little citrusy fish there, all those lovely lightly pickled veg, tartar sauce to bring it together, delicious. All right, now time for the actual burger. And there's lots of ways to do a beef burger. I love most of them, almost all of them. Today, we're gonna do one that I've been doing a lot lately. A Couple of things that I've been doing that I've been really enjoying. First of all, you know, I love a smash burger, but we're gonna do some big fat patties today. So we've got some 80-20 beef mint, so 80% lean, 20% fat. We're gonna get some balls this size. I should probably weigh this so that we know we can actually write a recipe for you. That'd be a good thing to do, wouldn't it? Daz, do us a favor. Set of scales in there, do you wanna grab that? It's Daz's time to shine. Put that under. <laughs> uh, put that on, put it on. Hold on. Daz, ladies and gentlemen. So how much is that? Zero. It wasn't me. 260, that seems a little bit excessive. 240, that's good. We don't want to mix it too much. If you mix it too much, it becomes like sausage meat and the fat binds into it too much and it kind of becomes a bouncy texture. So we've just kind of pressed it together as tight as we can. Now we're going to kind of make it into a patty. So flatten it out. We do want to kind of keep the edges intact. So this is what we don't want. And the reason we don't want that is because it'll it'll kind of open up more and more as we cook it. So we've got pretty big burger buns that we're going to use for this. So we want a pretty fat patty. The other thing that these things will do is they'll shrink. So you want them slightly bigger than your burger patty. Flat it out, push the edges in nicely. Kind of helps if you mold these and then you chill them down again because they're going to come up to temperature a little bit in your hands and you want these pretty cold when they hit the grill and that will also help them from not kind of falling apart as well. We'll season them with salt. We'll do it now and we'll leave them in the fridge to effectively dry vine for an hour or so, but I wouldn't stress too much about that. So squeeze it nice and tight, get that meat all compact and then start forming it. All right, wash my hands. We're just gonna generously season these with salt just on both sides, and then we'll leave them in the fridge. Get all our other ingredients ready. What I've been loving lately is the onion. Now I love caramelized onions on burgers, but they take a couple of hours to do properly. If I'm just trying to grill some burgers for friends and family, sometimes I haven't had the foresight to do this. So take a big brown onion or a sweet onion, yellow onion they're often also called. Peel it, and then we're gonna take big slices and we're gonna grill it when we're grilling our burgers. I think it gives you good texture, gets all nice and cooked and sweet, but you want pretty thick slices, so something like that. About half a centimeter, what's that, a quarter of an inch? I guess that's half a centimeter, a quarter of an inch, about that, isn't it? Onions ready, then we're gonna do some tomato. Nothing too thick, nothing too thin. Cheese, I'm gonna go for a smoked cheddar, not an American cheese. Now, I love an American cheese on a smash burger. That's kind of the only cheese really to have on a smash burger. But I do like mixing it up sometimes. And I think the smoked cheddar adds a nice little layer of smokiness. I'm just gonna cut that skin off and then cut some nice slices that will kind of melt on at the end. Of course we need pickles. Crinkle cut. And then for our sauce, we're not doing burger sauce. Again, I'm a big fan of a burger sauce, but I'm gonna do a whole grain mustard mayonnaise on this one. So you want about one third whole grain mustard to two thirds mayonnaise, which seems like a lot, but you wanna taste the mustard. The mayo is kind of really just there to kind of add moisture to the burger. There we go. Whole grain mustard, video above. Some baby gem lettuce. I'm gonna to cake the bottom off, pull those leaves away, and we'll give them a rinse. I think the gem's nice, got a really nice kind of crunchy core. It's got a great flavor. Give those a rinse and make sure that you dry them because no one wants water in your burger. Some streaky bacon, our burgers, and it's time to start grilling. Beef burger, we've already soldered these, remember? I'll put a little bit of oil on the top, a little dimple in the middle. Also got the onions that we're gonna get on pretty quickly. So a little bit of oil and salt on that side. They're gonna take a while to cook like that. So just kind of let them do their thing. Our bacon's been on for about four minutes. It's time to start cooking our bacon. Oh, our beef's been on for about four minutes. Wow, lost the plot. I'm gonna flip our onions now. We really wanna try and keep these together as much as possible. Why? Just because it looks better on the burger. No real reason. Ah, that's really hot. Just destroyed that one. All right, I'm gonna flip this burger patty too. Look at that. Look at the color. Yum. 
All right, our burger's almost done. Probably got two more minutes to go. I'm gonna flip it one more time and we're gonna layer on our smoked cheddar. Let that melt. We'll do it that way, Andy. Bacon's ready. That goes straight on top of the cheese. It'll also help the cheese to melt a little bit. I think that is about ready. All right, it's pretty important to let that rest for a minute. While that's resting, we can assemble the rest of the burger. Mustard mayo, both sides. Lettuce on the bottom and tomato. Burger, cheese, bacon, grilled onions, and of course the pickles. We'll do the cross section, even though a lot of people don't like a burger to be cut in half. But let's have a taste, see if I can get my mouth around this thing. It's big. Mmm, that is a big, beautiful, juicy burger. Wow. Well, that is delicious. I love how meaty that is. For me, that flavor of seeded mustard mayo, or seeded mustard in general, just bring me back to memories of roast beef. So, smokiness, those nice chunky onions, delicious. Thank you, Legends, so much for watching. Uh, don't forget to like this video if you're doing anything from it, and subscribe if you're not. See you next week for another recipe. And a huge thank you to George Motz for his time on the phone today. Um, I can't wait to come smash a burger at Hamburger America next time I'm in New York. Peace. Yeah, I think it's funny that Australians sometimes get upset with me when I call a, a chicken sandwich a chicken sandwich, you know, they're like, oh, you're turning into an American, like, don't. And I was like, well, no, there's kind of reason behind it, you know, like it's not. If I say chopped or ground beef, and they say, if I say mince instead, they say, what are you, British? What are you, Australian? Yeah, right. Mince? What is that? Right. <laughs> That's what it's called. <laughs> it's crazy.